The next session coming up, ladies and gentlemen, is Cracking Rental Real Estate Code. The panelists of this session are Anand Singhania, Vice President Credit National and MD Avinash Group. Welcome, Anand. <laughs> Nimish Arora, Chairman Credit New Initiatives Committee, Director Evan Group. Good evening. Vipul Agarwal, Risk Head, ICICI Bank. Good evening, Vipul. Are you pleased? And please welcome Saurabh Shaddal, currently Managing Director for Capital Markets at Cushman and Wakefield, India. Welcome. And to felicitate them, may I please invite on stage Rupa Shah, convener, Kredai Women's Wing, and Ala Patel from Kredai Gujarat. Please join me on stage to felicitate Vipul Agarwal. Also, please invite on stage Deval Soparkar and Dwij Patel of Kedai Gujarat to felicitate Saurabh Shaddal. and I request the moderator to please take over a shorted introduction of my career. Mm -hmm. Makes my job so easy. Yeah. Thank you. So, big pressure. Last session and I think some of you wanted to listen it today. So, thank you. Uh, so, you know, the topic is cracking the rental real estate portfolio. You know, and uh, we are hearing it since morning and yesterday also in the business meet. Uh, you know, India is going through a transformation. And as, you know, Kredai said and even Baman said in the morning that we need to be a trillion dollar real estate by 2030. And, you know, it has, it, it, you know, what we have seen is over the past 10, 15 years, you know, the rental market has uh, emerged as a promising avenue for both seasoned investors and newcomers. You know, in every market, especially in the top seven, eight markets, where this, you know, opportunity has arised. And they have built wealth over time through the property which they own for long term. And with a rapidly growing population, urbanizing trends we, we, we heard about since morning and economic dynamics, the opportunities are immense. However, you know, the unlocking of the full potential of this market requires a deep understanding of the nuances of the market, the capital structure, the market conditions, investment and development strategies. Through this interaction right now, we aim to deep dive and take away the understanding of unlocking this to a full potential. Uh, what is rental real estate? A rental real estate you know, refers in India, collection of investment properties that an entity which you are owning with the primary purpose of generating annuity income or monthly income which goes into annual income. And these properties can include commercial assets, schools, malls, warehousing, you know, uh, uh, so on and so forth, you know, which you, which you own, and hotels, absolutely. And, you know, the investors typically who have been investing in these have been acquiring these assets on a long-term uh, rental basis, long-term income and long-term returns. And then 
what we are seeing now over the last four, five years, some of the exits which has happened through Real Estate Investment Trust in India, we call it REIT, which is again very early days for REITs in India, but they have given phenomenal results, which we'll speak about with one of our panelists. So, you know, what was seen as a prerogative of the top seven, eight cities to create rental real estate, with what we are talking about today, we came out with our next set of 10 cities as, as in, you know, growth vector in India. So we see the priority which seven, eight cities have will be moving towards the top 10, top, next top 10 in India. And that's where we need to speak about today. That's the basis of the discussion today. That, you know, with our industry diversifying and diversifying into multi-cities, how this rental income will help the future developers in any city big or small, and what's the benefit here which we talk about. Uh, you know, what we have seen typically, you know, these rental real estate started with cities like Mumbai, Bangalore, and, and NCR. And then once the demand picked up, it moved to cities like Pune, Hyderabad, Chennai, a little bit part of Calcutta, and Ahmedabad. And the major reason of this city is doing very well what not because they could build well. It was because of the opportunity of the job. People from the smaller cities, tier two, tier three cities came to these bigger cities to work. And now with COVID, what has happened, most of these, uh, you know, talent also have invested in their parent cities and they are fine going back to their parent cities. And with government push of infrastructure connectivity through roads, airports, trains, going back or reaching to a smaller city now has become very convenient, very easy. So what we will see, a lot of talent which were prerogative of the top four, five, six cities will also look at staying back in their cities and looking at opportunities. And that is where you would be able to see opportunities in the rental portfolio. With this, you know, in today's session, we explore all these nuances of developing build to lease asset. And, you know, the panelists, especially Nimish and Anand, we will understand their exciting journeys of the last 8, 10, 12 years, what they have done. And, you know, the we want to understand long-term value creation, which you all have done, emphasizing structured ownership, which, which you all have experienced, asset upliftment, and, and how, how this whole journey has been. And then we will also get an expert insight from Bipul on how financiers look at these build to lease assets and how financing structures for such assets have evolved over time. With that, you know, we would deep dive into understanding each of these panelists' thoughts. So, Nimish, my first question to you. Uh, you know, you have developed one of the most marquee retail malls in the country. And, you know, we, as an open question, could you share your journey with the audience? How different is to evaluate and develop a business strategy that, you know, concurs around leasing the asset as against selling the asset? Sure. Thanks, Aurav. So, uh, you know, essentially 20 years ago when we were, we decided to take on this project, we were starting on a clean slate. We had never done a real a retail mall before that. So the only way was to go out, explore the world. We went to Dubai, we went to Singapore, Hong Kong, just studied the models there. And we realized that in India, everybody was doing a, a sale model, but we realized that that was not the way to go. Uh, and leasing was the only way to go. And at least the retail podium had to be held as a single asset. Uh, so how we developed our strategy was uh, we decided it's a mixed use project. We'll sell all the non-core parts, the offices, the hotel, uh, and other aspects. And, but retail, we will completely retain. And uh, it was both a lot of internal stakeholder selling as well as external, like banks and all, to convince them at that time that we will go with the leasing model. Forum was probably the only one at that time in Bangalore that was planning to come out with a, a leasing model. We were among the first in North India. 
but uh, that journey started there and over the years you know there was a lot of nervous times when we decided that we will sell this midway or you know but i think we just stuck to the long term vision uh, that this is the only way to go this is how it's successful globally so let's stick to that and uh, that is how we have lived this journey and we are proud to share that we've grown the rentals from 15 years ago when we opened 16 rather we complete 16 next week uh, we've grown our rentals five times in the last 16 years and and while you said that you know you sold some portion of it did that help you in creating your equity for your holding the asset of retail is is that something which came to the mind that time yeah i mean see you did not have enough capital to build the whole thing out of your own funds and bank funds so the only way was to partly do the financial closure with the help of banks like hdfc and sbi who funded us at that time along with selling some non core portions which we did not believe in the long term or we at least did not want to hold them from a yield perspective sure sure great great so anand my next question to you you know and believe me when i heard his story i got inspired that in a city like raipur he can what he has done so you know what was the trigger for you to look at developing retail malls that could be leased to global brands in a in a emerging city sorry you are not in top 10 still but uh, you know in a city like raipur great story which if you can share with people so the initial trigger was not uh, related to anything commercial or a structured planning but uh, it was more related to uh, the desire to develop uh, our real estate brand avinash group uh, we have been working in we visualized this project in 2006 this retail mall so we were just 10 year old company and we realized ki uh, the enhancement of brand was not there in typical residential and commercial projects and there was an opportunity to create a landmark project and uh, we thought uh, this is the right time when we can enhance the brand value of uh, avinash the parent company so that was one thing and second idea was the uh, somehow i would say love towards the city like i have been uh, brought up born and brought up in a city which was tier 3 town still it's a tier 3 town and it has a identity crisis like people in those days didn't know about raipur and they used to ask is it in jharkhand so i had some attachment towards the city and i wanted to uh, create an identity and love for the city by uh, giving a landmark project which can become identity so and i i knew the people of raipur were ready for it they were ready for a international experience sometime people don't know they deserve this kind of thing and i as a citizen of raipur and a developer i could read that people are ready for a international world class mall it just have to and it was a just a emotional thing uh, behind the triggering of this uh, mall project in 2006 and we started in 2007 wow and i think he is not sharing one more point which uh, which nimi shared what has been your you know he said i was emotional and i wanted to do raipur but it has a business reason also what's the return you have made please share with people oh yes uh, what uh, rightly nimi said nimi is sitting in a metro city so ours is not a case of five times growth but definitely yes in past 10 years uh, the growth is three times the rental yield is uh, almost three times and we are very happy earlier five years back pre covid i would say we had a plan ki hum isko reed ko transfer kar denge when it was the right opportunity is but today we are very strong and we are very clear for at least next 10 years we are not going to uh, let off with this property and uh, we are going to increase the operational efficiency the rental yield so that we can create a wealth जैसे बबन भाई बोलते हैं वी आर वेल्थ क्रिएटर्स एंड नॉट जस्ट डेवलपर्स सो आई थिंक दैट इज द आइडिया बिहाइंड दिस सुपर सुपर यू नो विपुल माय क्वेश्चन टू यू इज यू नो बीइंग बीइंग अ लेंडर एंड यू सी मार्केट फ्रॉम फ्रॉम रिस्क एंगल एज वेल एंड एवरीथिंग सो वांटेड टू अंडरस्टैंड फ्रॉम फ्रॉम योर पर्सपेक्टिव इज यू नो चर्निंग ऑफ कैश फ्लोस थ्रू बिल्ड टू सेल व्हिच इज which is what most of the people do as against long term value creation of build to lose portfolio so from a lender side what's a better strategy so thanks saurabh 
in terms of uh, as lender frankly we like to do both business models uh, whether it is build to sale build to suit build to lease we like all three the nuances of credit underwriting would be different in all three so like if it's a build to sale their visibility of cash flow is much more certain we are able to estimate their certainty rera has given us a lot of confidence in terms of uh, underwriting such transactions but in terms of build to lease the nuances are certainly more as compared to build to uh, what you call sale model because you are taking both development and leasing risk so we have seen markets over a period of time shifts demand and supply keep on shifting and it's a long gestation project so you are taking a 3 year 4 year construction risk and then you are estimating demand at that point of time how it plays out so it's much more nuanced so what we have seen is that uh, tier a developers if they are doing and which is much uh, what we call it as a taking a call on the micro market so we like to partner with them but uh, what we see is the financial flexibility of those people whether they would be able to sustain if there is a delay in project cost overrun time overrun and whether market does not support it when the project is getting complete so whether they would be able to sustain that kind of debt in their balance sheet other cash flows are sufficient to take care of that so we like to partner with those developers where we feel that uh, they would be able to sustain even if one or two projects are not doing well so to summarize in terms of cash flow churning much better because it's a shorter duration you are able to visualize but build to lease also we like because if we are partnering with such people uh, it is like avinash ji said it is only with long term vision you are able to say to so this gives us confidence in terms of developer is going into long term value creation is worried about his brand trying to build a reputation for himself so that gives us lot of comfort as lenders so that business a person is trying to do it for long term it's not a short term business model so that's what uh, we as lenders look at sure sure so so after having understood the mind the strategy and the mindset of of three of you uh, my next set i'm thinking about is how did you propel the business growth within this within this mind when you took about so anand my next question to you is how has the rent generating portfolio helped in your overall business and do you see this business achieving you said that yeah, for next 10 years you will not sell but do you see this business achieving higher scale in emerging cities in time to come yeah definitely as far as Uh, this is concerned like uh, overall expansion of our company overall growth and how rental is helping it's very evident like we have been seeing real estate industry we guys are very uh, we lack financial discipline in the past and bankers were not ready to uh, give fund easily on time when we required and that to at a higher uh, rate of interest so the best advantage in our business in growth in expanding our projects or expanding our brand is that we have a secured uh, rental portfolio a real estate asset we, which we can use any time we need it's like a backup plan sure. it's acting like a financial discipline whenever we need fund the disbursement is fast rate of interest is very less compared to typical commercial finance or project finance so that is the biggest advantage and then this big appreciation like up to 300% we have already seen but more than that it can be anything like suppose we go agar hum isko bech diye rehte during the booking stage and compared to today there is huge gap yeah, yeah, so the yeah. where wealth pehle uski valuation agar 200 crore thi today it's 500 crores so we don't know what what can be the value tomorrow yeah. so this is i would say a very great backup plan and uh, it gives a mental comfort it's a very cyclical business we all know real estate is a very cyclical business kabhi khushi kabhi gham hai to ye gham ke samay mein bahut kaam ki cheez hai aapko ek mental comfort rehta hai that's what i would like to say no it's a, it's a great point because you know what we have seen if you sell anything in real estate uh, what you get the 
value is for the next eight to 10 years what you would have made out of rental. And if you hold the product like you have hold the product for seven, eight, 10 years, you have hold the product. You have already got the money back. And as you rightly said, what is what 200 that time is 500 and it'll become 1000, you know? So obviously, you know, that's the play. So Nimish, coming to you on the same, you know, understanding that, uh, in, in, in your view, what were the key drivers and, and factors that helped in the strategy to make the mall successful? And, and does it have any impact on, your, on, on the company now and future? So I'll answer the second part first. Today, um, that project has become my introduction. When people, uh, I have, our group has done probably 90 to 100 other projects, but nobody knows us for those other 90, 100 projects. Wow. It is that one project that has become the flagship for the company, for the group, and has enhanced the brand value and visibility for us in, by leaps and bounds. Maybe if we would have sold, like Anand I just said before, uh, that might not have been the case. So yes, it has definitely given us a lot of support, a lot of, uh, it's become the backbone supporting our rest of the development initiatives. And it's always, it's, it's like money on tap available as and when we need, if we need. Um, so, so yes, that's, uh, it's given us a lot of strength. Uh, sharing a few key drivers uh, for us uh, in the business, I think one of the key things that we did from the start was identifying our customer very well. Um, and uh, how we defined it way back in 2004, it's the South Delhi woman who will do 70% of the shopping uh, in that mall and probably 100% for her family when she will visit for her kids, for her husband, et cetera. So that was our target customer. And we focused on the her experience entering the mall and exiting the mall and how we could increase that dwell time uh, inside the shopping center, how we could experience, enhance that experience for her. Uh, the more time she spent, automatically money spent will be higher and automatically tenants will do well and we will do well. So that was, so focusing on the customer, delivering that customer experience and continuously enhancing that customer experience was one key driver for us. Uh, second was focus, the moment we completed the asset, we immediately moved from a mindset of a real estate developer to a hospitality uh, mindset. We started focusing on the service and the hospitality side of it rather than just thinking that real estate developer hai, cost cut karna hai, or matlab, we th go with that mindset on a, pr when, a, when we go with the sale model, we go on uh, a lot of those mindsets. So I think uh, focusing on service and hospitality was second. And third key driver for us, I would say, was um, a lot of dynamism in our leasing. So we did much shorter leases. Uh, because we owned the entire portfolio, we could move around uh, tenants. So the tenants that were there in our mall uh, on day one on the ground floor, today are probably on the second floor. So over the journey of the people and uh, according to the taste of the consumer, because the South Delhi woman has also evolved in the last 15 years. So we have also uh, accordingly been able to evolve that experience over the last 15 years and continue to cater to their needs accordingly. And, and just to follow up on that while you were speaking, has it helped you in now your future projects of what you have done for the last 10, 12 years? and you have created a, such a great brand. I, I associate with that brand personally a lot, uh, what you have created in South Delhi. Uh, has that helped you now with your, with your future projects in terms of uh, entailing a better value when you are creating residential or any kind of development you are doing now in NCR oh, or 100, any other market? 100%. I would say that uh, when a buyer or an investor works with us, they have a lot of comfort that they know that you own and continue to operate one large asset of that size. And they find the comfort that there will not be a challenge in delivery by this developer because they have a steady stream of uh, rentals or cash flows available. And similarly, the banks and financial institutions also put in a lot of uh, confidence in our uh, 
ability to deliver newer projects and support them. Yeah, Vipul was telling me that he missed the bus not financing you that <laughs> time, so he spoke about it. Uh, also, you know, uh, very peculiar again, Nimish, in your point, and sorry we didn't discuss about this and something came to my mind now, also for the people who are listening. Uh, now you have created your real estate asset or portfolio or this select city walk into a financial product. So if you can just give a short one minute understanding to the people so they will understand how you have created a beautiful opportunity into a financial product of your participation in the Nexus Mall. Mind you, your asset is the key asset for them when they went to the REIT. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you for that. Uh, so uh, it's, it's been a beautiful journey. We've always believed in the long term of the product. We got dime a dozen offers all over this last 15 years to either acquire a majority stake uh, or to buy us out completely, but we were never interested in that because we always believed that this is an asset to be held for life. And this REIT was an opportunity. It was the first retail REIT in India. It was an opportunity to not sell but still convert your real estate into a financial product. Um, and that is what we chose to do. We, we made Blackstone our partner and uh, we launched India's first uh, retail REIT with them. Um, and it's been a phenomenal journey. It took us two years to get here. But uh, the whole idea being that we never wanted to sell. And this was like a perfect uh, exit without an exit because today I have uh, converted my real estate. Uh, just to add why we did it, because some people do ask that, um, we had a very large portion of our wealth in one asset. Today we proportionately own 17 assets in, across 13 cities and uh, we still are part of the platform and part of that journey and hopefully we'll grow that platform more along with Blackstone. Sure, sure. That's a great strategy. And Anand is also listening to you, so I don't know. He's saying I'll not sell for 10 years, but we'll see. Uh, so, uh, you know, Vipul, <laughs> uh, my question to you would be, you know, does an investor and a financier look at developers who have rent generating income differently and how? So definitely we uh, give, while a group assessment when we are doing, so we look at people having rental as part of the portfolio differently than it's if it's only a DEVCO company. So in DEVCO company, there's a lot of uncertainties involved, which is basically the project risk. But uh, where there's a stable cash flow, stable annuity income, and also the financial flexibility in terms of selling that asset in case of stress or pairing their stakes. So we have seen in last four, five years, a lot of big developers who during the cycle period part sold their stakes and deleveraged themselves. And they were able to do that, reduce their DEFCO debt because they had annuity income. So definitely we look uh, at these players. And also, like I mentioned in my first point, it gives if people are holding that assets and have created a brand value, that also gives us a lot of confidence in terms of that long-term sustainability of business, long-term vision. and. Um, because people work for their brand. So if you see in India, one thing which we find missing is quality assets. Like REIT has come. Why REITs have not got assets? If you speak to them, they say that there are no, not enough readable assets. Why there are no enough readable assets? Because people have done strata sales. People have not hold on to their assets. And like Nimish was able to move the tenant because he was owning. If a mall is strata sold, you would not be able to move the tenant because they would have done an underlying lease agreement, which would be of a longer tenure. You would not be able to change the tenant profile. So to make that footfalls and all coming into mall, you need to have that lot of development active uh, participation. It's not like you construct, sell, and move out. To have a successful retail mall, you need to have a lot of development act developer activity in terms of getting that footfall into mall which only if you're owning, then you would be able to do that. So in terms of financial profile, we give a lot of credence to people who have that. And in times of stress, we've seen that people, their office expenses coming out of that uh, 
rentals, cash flows in projects are uncertain, sales are not happening or there are cash flow uncertainty. So office expenses gets paid through those uh, rentals. So definitely we look at these players uh, differently and we give a lot of credence in terms of financial flexibility. And we would like to partner more with players who have that uh, in their portfolio as compared to a pure play DEFCO company. Sure, sure. No, what we are seeing a trend also is in a lot of cities, including larger cities, people who are doing multi-product or a township. Uh, you know, we are seeing now uh, people, uh, developers looking at holding the assets which are within the township of, hotel, you know, a school and a hospital and a commercial which is part of your development and then do residential also because A, you hold the asset, you increase the value and also because they are remaining in the project for very long, the, the people who are buying the residential, they are more confident, they will pay you more because you are also invested in them. So we are definitely seeing that trend in, in most of the cities where there is a larger, yeah, larger developments are happening. Now, having said that, you know, this is all good to hear, but I'm sure, you know, there are a lot of challenges and hurdles also they must have faced. So it's important that we, we touch that point as well. Uh, so Anand, where do you feel is, is the current mindset of your peers or yourself about holding an asset long term? and building a rental income from the same. And, and what are the challenges you faced and what, what's, what's uh, you know, you are, you are hearing from your peers? So I think uh, I've been discussing since uh, this panel was there, it was scheduled. So I spoke to some of the tier one, tier two, tier three town developers about it, what they think about the idea of this rental real estate. So I think most of them are not even thinking about it. Frankly speaking, most of them are not thinking about it. Some of them are thinking about it, but I think uh, they don't know how to do it. Like, what is the structure, what is the right way? Because real estate, uh, when it sells, it, we are very much lewd to divert those monies like receivables in buying new land in the project expansion and all. So it's very difficult to control our emotions and restrict to hold that money and invest in that asset which is to be, uh, which will be developed uh, in its own time and which will develop, uh, which will have its own rental uh, returns. So that mindset is to be there. Like we, uh, I see that is lacking as of now and uh, most of the developers are enjoying this sale and uh, moving to the another project and all. But when we really think, when we sit and when we silently uh, introspect, we, I think we come to know that uh, something is missing. There is a lack of peace of mind. There is a lack of comfort, like we are always worried like what's going to happen when uh, market changes, when cash flows are not sufficient. So I think uh, we need to develop this mindset and I think Kadai has rightly, uh, Shekhar Bhai and Gujarat team has rightly thought of this topic at this uh, moment. I feel all of uh, us, uh, we developers should be in rental real estate in some form depending upon the potential of the city. It can be retail, it can be small start, but something should be there. Yeah, sure. I, I remember talking to Shekhar Bhai a year back and, you know, in Ahmedabad and he was really, really, you know, thinking about and obviously the action has happened to create a rental portfolio there. So Nimish, uh, you know, talk us through your journey in terms of the challenges you faced, you know, while building a, such a large you know, commercial retail portfolio there. What, what was the challenge that time? Because 2006, 2004, even in a city like NCR, nobody was thinking, right? Or in India, I would say. I think uh, I can spend a day talking about the challenges. Uh, but uh, just to pick a few and give some perspective, I think the first biggest one, uh, when you start a project which is uh, with an intention for build to lease is capital. Uh, capital was a big challenge. We as a group did not have it alone. Uh, so we reached out to a few friends and family uh, and uh, then we created a partnership uh, so, so that we could have at least enough equity to go with the project. Uh, then obviously the second challenge that came was the partnership that all of us were not from real estate background. 
so there were a lot of different perspectives, a lot of insecurities, a lot of nervousness. Um, but over the journey of the last 20 odd years uh, of this project, uh, the focus of all the three partners luckily was always the project comes first. There might be disagreements, there might be things that we don't agree to. Uh, within between the three of us, but the project comes first. We will take a decision which is in the larger interest of the project, and I think that was a big, big learning. And it's been a journey, a beautiful journey with uh, both our partners. And uh, lastly, I would say uh, that uh, another challenge that we faced: we were doing a mall for the first time as a group. And there were not any enough examples in the country. Even the architects were not so geared up as to what it took. And you know, during the construction, we kept upping the game, trying to do a better delivery or a better experience or a better interiors. So from our original financial closure and budget, we overshot by almost 25 to 30 uh, percent. And in those times, to spend 80, 70, 80 crores extra on a project, uh, in way back in 2005, six, it meant a lot of money, uh, and banks started getting uncomfortable, and that was a big, big challenge. Uh, we did decide to then sell portion of the offices, which was not originally part of the plan. But uh, again, that was one big challenge that uh, we had to overcome. But luckily, the rentals and you know our belief in the longer-term project kind of uh, just kept us going, and uh, we. We had a seven-year payback, and we paid back in four years to the banks. Oh, wow, wow. And, and if 25% was sounding more, Anand Bhai had spent 100% more than his... 65, 70%. 65, 70% more than his envisage cost when he was building this retail. So, you know. So, so, you know, having said that now, you know, we have understood what you all were thinking, how you all went through what was the what was the vision the challenges you faced now for for everyone who's sitting here and listening rapidly so with your you know and and i would i would open it for all of you with your experience in rental real estate where do you see indian rental real estate can be larger city or smaller cities or any city where what's your you have gone through this whole tough period. You started a long time back in a larger city. You have gone. You have started in a city, uh, you know, from a lender side. You know, you all have been going through that. So what's your view on capital stack going forward on the rental real estate? Your vision on what you see by, let's say, 2000. Everyone is talking 2030, so I'll also say, okay, <laughs> let's say 2030. I would just like to say, like, I feel very strongly feel very soon we all developers will adopt this model of having some sort of revenues from rental real estate. And I think uh, it can be between 5 to 10 percent of the revenues of the real estate developer. Like if you have total real estate ka 100 crore ka revenue, hai, to 5 se 10 crore ka aapka rental revenue, ho, that should be the idea. So with this in mind and with 13,000 developers in Kadai and outside sab mila ke itne log hai, I really feel there will be huge uh, development of real estate asset class where rental income is there. And we, today we are talking about malls. But there's a lot of uh, rental real estate, other real estate which is relevant to the city. Like recently we did this uh, service apartment, studio apartment concept in Raipur. Imagine studio apartment, service apartment in a tier 3 town like Raipur. Well, huge response. People are getting very aspirational. People want to buy this service apartment and give to Airbnb. The yield is very high. So rental real estate, it can go to anywhere. I was talking to Manoj Bhai. He said, school rental is the best option. Highest return on investment on any re rental real estate is school. I don't think many of us would agree with that before this statement of Manoj Bhai. So there is a huge scope of rental real estate. It's not only a mall, I would say, but yes, we have Select City Walk and Magneto Mall in Tier 3 town, which has done brilliantly well. And uh, challenge was, of course, there. It was very difficult in that time to build that mall. It was just built by emotion. But today, it is having a bankable value. It is having a financial value. So I, would, I feel by 2030, most of the developers 
I would say more than 75% of the developers, whether it's small city, big city, will be having rental real estate as portfolio depending on their city. And um, this would be one important thing, important DNA ingredient of any successful developer. That's what I would like to say. Super. And any thoughts of yours, Nimish? Yeah, no, I think uh, we've just touched the tip of the iceberg right now. There are four REITs in India and maybe about five or seven inwits so far. Uh, America has about 200 REITs which are listed on the stock exchanges. So uh, there is a lot of potential. Uh, for, uh, I think more and more people will start consolidating assets, build assets which are more bankable, which are more investable. Uh, so to say that, just to share, um, only compliant assets attract capital from the likes of larger funds like Blackstone, Brookfield, CPPIB, or Adia, or whatever. P things which are done to, as per plan, completely kosher, uh, and being run with full compliances in all respects. Uh, that's the kind of assets, and the quality of such assets uh, will sort of drive investment into that. Um, and uh, in terms of variety, I think uh, alternative asset classes are only picking up, whether it's education, colleges, universities. Uh, I do know for a fact uh, Haryana Private University Act allows uh, colleges and universities to get a university act approval if they have a 30-year lease. Uh, so if somebody is doing a building and leasing it to a university for a 30-year, they have their annuity income and the university only then gets a license or a, a permission to operate a university. So a lot of such student housing is another uh, very good uh, opportunity. Even, even uh, warehousing we are seeing. Of course, I mean warehousing is growing with the increase in consumption and now consumption moving to tier two and tier three towns. We see all the th three, four large warehousing platforms now setting up centers even along the tier three, two and three towns as well. So I would agree with what Nimish said. In terms of growth opportunities, we feel there is humongous and there's a lot of institutional capital which is ready to be deployed for operating assets at this point of time. So there are develop, uh, assets getting, platforms getting created to invest in warehousing, data centers or uh, other alternative classes. But again, like uh, Nimish said, we need to create assets which are from a long-term sustainability perspective, thinking that we have to have kosher approvals, kosher construction, and thinking from a long-term sustainability perspective because those assets only get those institutional capital. And like REIT platform, it's tip of the iceberg. We feel that this platform would grow only from here on. It's not going to go down. So our view is that uh, this asset class is going to do well. And India growth story, if we play our micro well, macro story is intact, but we have to play our micro well. And if we play micro well, I think uh, only sky is the limit. Sure, thank you, thank you. So, so we are done with the, any, anyone has any questions before we wrap up the session? Hello, Kapil. No couple well. So my question for Anand sir and Nimish both, uh, is e-commerce a threat for retail and work from home a threat for commercial leasing? Uh, e-commerce is still about 12% of the complete uh, retail consumption across the country. E-commerce is here to stay, uh, it will grow. But uh, the touch and feel aspect of retail is what drives consumption, not just the online. Uh, and uh, from a work from home, a quick one on that is, uh, I think uh, in the US started with work from home and they are now pushing all their employees back to the office. Um, it's happening even in India, almost 50 to 60% of the workforce is now back in offices. And, and TCS uh, has come out with their strategy of putting everyone back in office. Yeah. 
So I would like to say, like work from home, people are now more inclined to work near home. So work from home, of course it's not, it has its own minuses. And so work near home is a concept which we all should encourage. It's in the interest of we developers. And then as far as uh, e-commerce is concerned, of course it's affecting to some extent. But we developers, uh, mall developers particularly, we have now shifted to experiential thing. Like having things in the mall which are more of experiential nature. Like, so that is the difference uh, we need to create. Of course, that is going to survive and that is going to hit us, but at the same time, we can be future ready uh, considering this. Hello. Yeah. Hello. This side. Myself, Rishabh Jain. I am also a developer and also in renting business. I want to share my own experience. Renting is a very good model to use for being a developer we should have two types of crops. One is a routine crop, that is the making building and selling the building. But at the same time, if the developer plants some money into the, uh, you can say, ki ek bagicha lagaiye, jahan par kuch ped aap aise lagate hai, jisse lagatar fal milega, so that will be a really good concept. It not, should not be like that, ki all the money you are putting into the uh, making building, selling the building. My experience about something which the gentleman has said, okay, what will be the threat of the e-commerce? I don't think it's a threat. I constructed a building 25 years back on a very busy junction, which now recently got evacuated because of the new trend that everybody wants a very good parking. Nobody minds whether you are in a very good location of the junction. They, have a, they will go with the Google location. So now there was a threat. So now I am converting into the lodge, a hotel, a small hotel. So I feel the renting will never have that kind of challenge. And uh, which Raipur, Mr. Vinasi was telling, is wonderful that even selling is not a very good idea, unless until it is a very big requirement in your project or you are in some kind of trouble. Unless, unless that time it should not be sold. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, uh, we would like to wrap up the session. Thank you. Uh, you can ask those questions in your one-on-one -on -one with any of the panelists. Thank you for your patient hearing. Thank you. And thank you for staying back till the end of the day. Thank you to all the panelists and thank you to the moderator. Yes, please, of course, come together for a group photograph. Ladies and gentlemen, as they take this photograph, um, I must inform you all that we intend to start at 10.30 tomorrow morning, so please Promise us that you will be in your seats by 10.30 a.m. sharp tomorrow morning. The evening is young. Please have lots of fun in this most wonderful destination. I hope all of you had a contented day. We tried our best to put forth great content on stage. This was day one at the Credit Natcon 20, 2023, and we will see you tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. sharp. Have a great evening. Thank you.